Well, as Benjamin Netanyahu heads to Washington for Tuesday's formal announcement and signing of uh, the peace accord between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, uh, and also now Bahrain. And as I said a couple of times, uh, you don't know how quickly this snowball is going to start rolling before other countries begin latching on to this peace process and become the next to make normalization peace with Israel. You know, some of the names that are popping up right now are Morocco, where in which the United States is pressing to formalize flights between the two countries, and also Oman. But the biggest uh, fish would be Saudi Arabia, which uh, it is believed globally that uh, Bahrain would not have been able to normalize relations with Israel if not given the green light by Saudi Arabia. And you know, here's something that I heard yesterday on an article that uh, Jerry Kushner said. He said that their goal was to make the Palestinian issue a completely separate issue than the uh, peace between the Arab nations. And because that they have successfully done that, many uh, may join this uh, peace process because they have successfully got the rest of the world looking at it separate from the Palestinian issue. Whereas in the past, uh, if you want to have peace with the Middle East, you had to solve the Palestinian issue first, then there'd be peace. But now that issue is completely separate. In fact, uh, Jared Kushner said that the uh, Palestinians would have to get peace when they felt like they wanted peace. But the question still remains the same, that who now is going to be next in line? Now, I tell you what, if Saudi Arabia, I would look for a major line to develop as to who will be the next after that. And you know, there's something else in the air as well that's being uh, bantered about. And certainly, no, most of us never thought that this peace with many would ever come. Oh yeah, we believed it was uh, going to be a part of a future process that needed to take place in order for the tribulation period to begin. But like most in this world, we never thought it would actually take place. Now that it's begun, and it's, I, I don't think there's any question that it's going to snowball into a peace with many, and I think in, a, in the very near future, the next thing on the prophetic map that uh, seems to be impossible, that we all believe is going to take place but can't really see how it will, because it seems like such an impossible task, and that being the normalization of the Temple Mount, meaning that at some point in time there has to be a temple built on the Temple Mount in order for the Antichrist to uh, uh, desecrate it three and a half years into the Tribulation period. You know, here's an article coming out of the Jerusalem Post that talks specifically about the normalization of the Temple Mount. And, you know, right now all they're doing is talking about it, but the Bible says that at some point in time that this will be have to come pass. And this is what the article says. It says, it is no coincidence that the deal to normalize relations between the uh, state of Israel and the United Arab Emirates is called the Abraham Accords. The patriarch common to both Judaism and Islam is revered by both as the father of both religions and peoples. Both Jews and Muslims believe that Abraham was told to sacrifice his son. While commentators differ on the identity of the son, Jews, of course, believe that the uh, binding of Isaac was a scene set on the Temple Mount that, that earlier was the point of creation and later became the location for the two greatest houses of worship for the Jewish nation. Isaiah prophesied the Temple Mount in the future would be called a house of prayer for all nations. Perhaps it would be prudent to finally realize this prophecy by allowing Jews and Muslims to pray on the Temple Mount in harmony and accord without one trampling on the rights and liberties of the other. Now, of course, we know that Israel took the Temple Mount back in 1967, but has pretty much kept uh, the status quo of what uh, was going on beforehand. Now, let's, let's go ahead and read on. It says, this status quo has been kept because Israel, Israeli leaders did not want to stoke widespread global Islamic anger and riots. It has been openly stated by Israeli authorities that this is a security issue and upsetting the current order of the Temple Mount could provoke violence. However, we are now living in unprecedented times. Now, like I said, this is coming out of the Jerusalem Post. This is not a Christian media center, nor is the, the person that writes, as far as I know, is not a Christian either. 
But going on with the article, says Israel has just signed an agreement with an Arab Gulf nation, has been allowed flyover rights by Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, and is set to open its first embassy in Jerusalem by a Muslim-majority nation, Kosovo. The wall of Islamic rejection to the Jewish state and the Jewish sovereignty in its indigenous and ancestral homeland is being taken apart brick by brick. While the conflicts of the past are ending, taboos are certainly being shattered. Arguably, the largest taboo, Jewish prayer on the Temple Mount, also needs to be addressed in concord and unity. Now, the article goes on to say that uh, the United Arab Emirate delegation will be coming to Israel on September 22nd. They will be touring the Temple Mount. And one of their suggestions is that they should also invite Palestinian leader uh, Mahmoud Abbas to be a part of that delegation as a gesture of peace and uh, see if he will join them in order to get involved in this peace process. Now, whether that happens or not, is uh, we'll have to wait and see. But the Bible is clear that at some point in time, there will be a normalization of the Temple Mount in which, in Revelation chapter 11, it states that uh, John is told to go measure the Temple that will be alive uh, during the Tribulation period, and that he was told to measure it, but to not measure the outer court because of the fact that it would be given over to the Gentiles. So that picture gives us the impression that there may be, there's at least going to be more than one religion other than the Jewish temple that will be on the Temple Mount, and maybe all three, which would be the Muslim temple or mosque, I should say, uh, the Jewish temple, and also a Christian uh, church or, or representation that will also be on the uh, Temple Mount. And certainly there will be maybe more than just the uh, Muslim, Jewish, and uh, Christian temple or synagogues or mosque or whatever that will wind up on uh, the Temple Mount, but that's the three that I would probably represent. Nobody else really has a hole on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. But once this normalization begins to take hold, you can expect a normalization of the Temple Mount. Uh, it sounds impossible, but the bottom line is at some point in time, the Temple must be divided between the uh, Jewish and the Gentile populations. Now, how that's divided up, we don't know. We just know that there will be a Jewish temple that will be rebuilt on the Temple Mount. And certainly, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. In fact, uh, it took us all surprise, by surprise when the United Arab Emirates declared that they would normalize relations with uh, Israel and also Bahrain when they finally made the statement that they would as well. All that was done behind the scenes. So it's very possible that the Temple Mount could very well be a part of some type of normalization effort that will be down the road. But we know that it must be completed before three and a half years is up uh, from the start of the gateway, which would be the peace with many that starts the tribulation period. Then three and a half years later, the Antichrist would come into the temple and he would desecrate it. So I believe that this normalization of the Temple Mount must begin sometime either uh, after the tribulation begins or as part of some agreement that uh, will be implemented with a peace with many. And I can truthfully say I never thought that this would take place or they'd even be talking about it. Even though we didn't, we know it's written in the pages of the Bible that's going to happen. But it all seems so unreal that we are actually living in a day when we could see two things happen. One, the normalization and the peace accord between Israel and many, and also the rebuilding of the temple. But this could all happen very soon. Now, I don't know that we'll be able to see the final parts of it because of the fact that I believe the rapture of the church will take place first. Then the tribulation period will begin, of course. And certainly you don't want to be here when this peace process is finalized because that means that you're going to be heading into the tribulation period. But, you know, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, there are two things that you have to look forward to. Number one, you're going to be taken in the rapture of the church. Uh, number two, if you don't, if you die before then then you will be taken to heaven. But the only way that's going to happen is if you are a Christian. And of course, you know that the only way you can become a Christian is to repent, believe that Jesus died on the cross for you, accept him as your Savior, and from this day, live for him. And I would challenge you today that if you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, that today be that day. 
And if you do become a Christian, put it in the comments or go to my website and uh, email me and let me know that you have come to know the Lord as Savior. And you that are Christians, you need a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Go down to my uh, description section in this video. Click on the link provided and it'll take you to either get the free copy, which is written in nine different languages. It has a readership of over five billion people. And of course, you can also get, now that's free, but you can also get the uh, paid version, which is a paperback. And you can purchase that and hand it to your lost friend or loved one. You certainly don't want the world telling your lost friend or loved one how they need to react once the tribulation period begins. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.